Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. This is back in the hostage loft. If you were watching early last year, you will probably recognize the hostage loft. I am not blinking at you in Morse code to come and uh, save me. This is just where I get a bit of admin work done when I'm down on the coast with my family. Uh, wanted to come and talk to you guys today about something that I see coming up a lot and something that I definitely experienced in my own recovery and particularly once I was recovered. And that is expectation management in the recovery process and after the recovery process. Where we set our expectations about what life is meant to be like or what the recovery process is meant to be like or how we're meant to be or who we're meant to be when we're recovered, I think is so, so, so important. We tend to put the idea of being fully recovered on this big pedestal that some people uh, get a little bit wrong in that they, I think, think it's going to be total butterflies, unicorns, rainbows, puppies. And I wish that were the case. Uh, it is amazing. Being recovered compared to being in an eating disorder is amazing. I will tell you what it is not. It is not a cure for life being difficult. It is not a cure for life being imperfect or having tough moments or having anxiety or low mood or whatever it might be. It can have a huge bearing on those things, but it is not a cure for being a human being. Uh, the best example I can give of this is my own experience, which if you were watching back when my dad was diagnosed, uh, you'll, would, you might have seen a video where I was talking about the fact that I really believed that because I had done such hard work in recovery and was now recovered, that there was a part of me that really believed that nothing bad was ever going to happen again. And I don't think that I really believed that nothing bad would ever happen in the many decades which are hopefully left in my life, but that I believed that I would not be affected by it, that I'd be able to just soldier through and use all of my recovery knowledge and skills and tools and I would not feel sadness or anxiety or anger or loss uh, to the degree that maybe I did when I was unwell or before I was unwell, that recovery was going to make me a superhuman. And in the last two years of my life, which have been without a doubt the most challenging, not just because of the events I've been through, but the, you know, uh, emotional and mental ups and downs I've experienced as a result, I had to learn the hard way that recovery was not a cure for being a human, having a human experience. It was a process by which I got rid of the most destructive way that I coped with life being difficult and conversely then found ways to cope, manage, tolerate, help seek, uh, to speak to myself in a more constructive, productive way that helped me navigate when life was just truly, truly horrible. Um, and I hear that a lot from people is that they really believe that full recovery is going to mean never another anxious day, never another bad body image day, uh, never another day of self-doubt or uh, low mood or whatever it might be. And that is just simply not true. Uh, full recovery actually opens you up more so to vulnerability and seeing where you need help and equipping you with the ability to ask for that help it equips you with a knowledge of your own uh, idiosyncrasies, your own temperament that you might be more anxious. So you might need more of a time out and more boundaries and you might need uh, to be more gentle with yourself. It doesn't take away those things necessarily. It gives you a greater knowledge and understanding of them and then gives you the opportunity to say, those old coping mechanisms aren't working. Would you like some new ones that actually do work? and will help you to manage so you never get back to this place of rock bottom, can't cope, can't keep it together, something please just help me get through the next 30 seconds, right? If those expectations of full recovery, I think that's something we really, really need to address. Uh, it is very hard to demonstrate what full recovery is. That's why I've always tried to be really transparent and really open about my struggles, about particularly my life since I recovered, that you know, with the loss and the stress and everything else that I, the you know, post-traumatic stress that I have experienced since being recovered, um, it certainly didn't mean that I went backwards or that, you know, my eating disorder came back, which is again, another 
example of why full recovery and using all those things you learn in recovery is so important that you don't have to go back, that it isn't inevitable, that your eating disorder comes back. Hell no. Um, but that's why I try to demonstrate what I've been through and what lo life looks like as a recovered person, because I think we need to see the, uh, the true nature of uh, allowing yourself to be human and that that is so much of what recovery is about is allowing yourself to have human experiences and human emotions but to be able to take care of yourself no matter what and without recovery I certainly wouldn't have been able to do that but I did go through a period of frustration and disappointment being like why do I feel so anxious and why do I feel so horrible wasn't I meant to come out with a cape and superpowers and it's like no Actually, it was a reckoning with the fact that you aren't superhuman and you don't have to be and you can have low moments and down moments and need help and, uh, you know, to, to not have to have it together all the time or hide the fact that you're not coping. Uh, it is actually a reckoning with the fact that we are not superhuman. I also see a lot of this expectation management stuff going awry with body image that people really believe that recovery will mean never ever another bad body image moment or day and that is just not realistic it's when I start getting into body image work with clients it's one of the first things I ask them what is your expectation of what life might be like uh, recovered when it comes to body image and their expectation sometimes is well I will love my body I will never have another bad thought about it I will just be comfortable in it all the time it's like yeesh no <laughs> Uh, it is seriously an improvement, radically uh, an improvement uh, in terms of the intensity of bad body image, the frequency of it, uh, but you are still going to be a person occupying a body, which is kind of a weird experience sometimes, eating disorder or not, in a society where you are subliminally being sent messages about bodies all the time. So you can be intentional with your Instagram and not follow bodies that make you feel bad. You can walk away from conversations that aren't constructive. The world is still going to be beaming things into your uh, eyes that are not terribly helpful for you body image wise. And it's human to have a response to that from time to time. So I'll have people who really think they are failing. They are failing at recovery because they still have the occasional bad body image day. Or they think that that is a red flag for relapse. If they put on a pair of jeans and go, Ugh, I do not love being in my body today. It is your right and entitlement to be a person. You are not a superhero because you've gone through this recovery process. It is absolutely worth it to get to this outcome. But I think if we keep oversimplifying what full recovery is without talking about the nuance of still being a person and being allowed to struggle uh, with our mental health, with our emotions, with our lives – without then shaming ourselves for not being superhuman just because we went through this process. Um, this process is about being more human, more vulnerable, more able to connect, more able to ask for help, more able to put our hand up and say, I don't have all the answers and I'm listening and I'm open and I'm asking for your help, right? Um, so that became a little bit more like an anecdotal share than anything else. Uh, but like I said, just in my work as a coach one-on-one -on -one with people, so much of what we talk about is uh, the expectation people have of, of their short-term goals, their long-term goals, what life's going to look like. Um, and that is really, really important as well for you to continue to have a sense of motivation in recovery. You need to have a sense of accomplishment. And have a sense of um, progress. If you are setting the bar for what you're doing so high that you can't clear it, how are you ever going to feel good about that? If you just keep smashing into the bar and going, oh, couldn't clear that, couldn't clear that because the goal is just too high or the expectation is too high, of course you're not going to want to keep doing this thing. Uh, that is why I believe in flexible, incremental, achievable goals. They are the three key components of how I set goals with client, clients is to make sure they can do it and that they can look back and go, oh my God, what went well there? How did I do that? So hopefully that's helpful to you if you're someone who is recovering or recovered and feeling like, oh, mm, this isn't quite as sparkly as I thought it was going to be, <laughs> especially if you're someone recovering or who recovered in 2020 or 2021 
it did take a bit of the shine off it. I totally understand that, but you've got a long life of being recovered and, you know, the world will spin back around to something more positive. That's the nature of how these things go. Uh, but this was a really challenging time to recover or be recovered, especially a great example is people who skew younger of my clients. They will uh, tend to have it on their list of whys, their whys for recovery, that they want to travel the world. Well, that got crossed off everyone's list pretty quickly, didn't it? So I can understand uh, why that might have even impacted some people's expectations or motivation for uh, recovering or being recovered uh, and their appreciation of what that means for their life. Uh, but I really, really encourage you to therefore be even more careful with how you're talking to yourself about those expectations uh, and managing those a little bit more carefully going forward. Anyway, guys, sending you all a ton of love. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you may need to do some expectation management tweaking in the comments below. Uh, in the meantime, as always, much love and take care. Bye, guys.